I have been dreaming about a gothic 18th century gown fit for a vampire for some time now. I figured since I'm making my way to New Orleans, why not make this dream a reality? Many of you know I love a good fluffy pastel confection of a gown, but I also love me some sexy 18th century vampires. So in this video, I'm going to combine those two aesthetics and cruise around the French Quarter. Let's get started. Starting with the rump, I am using this free pattern from Scroop Patterns. I am actually using the View A, which fits from 1775 to 1787. I am using black linen, pre-made bias tape, polyfill, and modern sewing techniques. However, what makes this pattern really cool is that they also include historical sewing techniques. So if you wanted to hand sew this rump, it has instructions on what type of stitches to use and how to do that. I started by cutting my pattern pieces out on the fold twice and then I stitched the pieces together with the right sides together at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Using pinking shears I trimmed the seam allowance. I prefer to do this than to clip notches and curves because it's faster and just as precise. Then I turned the right sides of the fabric out transfer the quilting markings from the pattern to the fabric, pin on the markings, and with a four millimeter stitch length, I can quilt my two layers together. Now I get to stuff the rump channels with polyfill. I actually ran out, so I sacrificed an old bum roll so that I could fill the rump to my desired shape. I'm not really sure how much polyfill I used, but it got the job done. Then I pleated the top down using the pleating guide on the pattern. I pinned my bias tape to the raw edge of the padding. I added about one yard of bias tape on each side of the padding to use as the strings to tie around my waist. Then I zigzag stitched over the bias tape and my rump was complete. Moving on to the stays. I'm actually using the American Duchess Simplicity Patterns pattern. I used this pattern for my Sakizo Amethyst cosplay, as well as the like Rococo boudoir shoot that I did way forever ago. And I really like this pattern. I am also super grateful that my friend Ganoza Costuming sent me this beautiful black brocade. It's stunning, I love it. I am using that as the fashion fabric, and then I will be using white coatil. I just didn't have any black coatil on hand, but I will line it all with black fabric so no one will even know that the coatil is white. And for boning, I'm going to be using a synthetic whalebone that I purchased online at a corset supply shop. Let's make a pair of stays. I'm skipping the mock-up process because I've actually made modifications to the pattern paper for the adjustments from my first pair of stays with this pattern. So I'm starting by tracing each piece onto the coatil and then mirroring that piece and tracing it again. This is the best way that I've found to be the most precise in stay and corset making. Then I will cut my pieces out on my lining fabric. Now, using my light box, I'm going to transfer my boning channel markings onto the wrong side of my coatil. This is the moment I realized that using white coatil is actually a good thing since it's way easier to see through compared to black. Once my boning channels were marked, I pinned my coatil to my fashion fabric and then instead of cutting out my pieces super precise, I just cut them out leaving lots of wiggle room. From there, I used a basting stitch to sew the boning channels, which also attaches these two layers of fabric together. And once that was done, I can go back and do a more precise cutting of this fabric. Even though I have made these stays twice before, I've never followed the instructions on doing the grommets. So I'm actually doing that this time. And I must say this is a way easier and less like pressure than how, would I, how I would have done this. So I folded over the back edge and pressed it down. Then I pinned and stitched my back boning channel. Using my back pattern piece, I marked the grommet placement. Then with a hole punch and an awl, I made my hole and set my grommet. My grommet setter has tools I could buy to cut the holes for me as well. I'm just cheap and haven't bought them yet. I'm following instructions and it's actually not going horribly, which is freaking great. I need to press all of these seams open and uh, then I can go ahead and cut 
and Dremel the edges of all of this boning and insert it. But like, we're, did, we're doing so good. I'm gonna go eat lunch, but just wanna show you. Oh, I'll flip it over and show you. For the boning, I measure and cut each piece as I'm placing it into my stays. I use my Dremel to round the edges because I'm adding so many pieces of boning that this way is so much faster. However, I have been also known to use a nail file when I'm only adding a couple of pieces of boning to something. Uh, typically I'll do that if I'm too lazy to get my Dremel out as well. When measuring boning, I try to make my pieces about a half inch short on each side of the stays. So if a piece only goes into the top binding area, then I make it a half of an inch shorter than the channel length. But if it reaches the top and bottom binding sections, then it's an entire inch shorter than the channel. I actually ran out of boning, so I decided to take apart these stays that I made in the summer of 2020 and harvest them for parts. They were always too large for me, so I was gonna have to remake them at some point anyway. Okay, so this bone came out of those old stays. I don't know what happened to it. Who hurt you? That is all. Now that my stays are fully boned, it's time to add the lining and then the binding. I absolutely hate sewing binding onto stays with tabs. I think I hate it just as much as sewing glove gussets, but I digress. Basically, I just line up all the seams on the lining to the seams on the fashion layer. Then I can stitch the top and bottom down by machine and use a whip stitch to hand sew the back of the lining to the back panel near the grommets. In classic Casey fashion, I gave up on filming the binding process, but for some reason I decided to completely hand sew the binding. So I've linked Red Threaded's video on sewing binding in the description to help you out. Now that my undergarments are finished, it's time to get started on the parts of the costume that will actually be seen. But before we can do that, let's have a word from today's sponsor, me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. For this project, I will be using a technique called timbre embroidery. It is a couture sewing technique used in historical costumes, costumes for the movies, couture fashion. It's been around for over 500 years and it's typically used for embellishments like embroidery or also like adding beadwork and things like that in large scale to garments. I will be using this technique for a stomacher in this costume, but I offer an online go at your own pace course available on my website that's only $20 right now. And I also offer embroidery kits that can go alongside this class. You can buy a class kit that just has the tools you'll see used in the class, or you can purchase a design kit that has a design like a moth or a skull, and you can still follow the course, but create an actual piece before getting started on your embroidery piece or on your costume. Right now, for the month of May, I am offering a $5 off coupon for anything in my store. Use the code MAY2023 and you can get anything you want. That's the courses, the kit. As of June 1st, the price of this course will go up, so make sure to use the code MAY2023 by the end of the month to get $5 off. And now, Without further ado, let's make a stomacher. All right, so I am moving on to the stomacher and I basically am taking an idea that I saw on Instagram. I will link the Instagram account in the video that gave me this idea, but I'm making the stomacher its own piece that like laces up in the back. In previous attempts to make a stomacher, I always had issues with the fit in the front. Basically, it was always too big. I did a placard for my Anne Boleyn costume and even after taking it in several times, it still appeared very large. I also had issues with my 18th century pumpkin dress. Now I know you're all going to yell at me about what pattern I'm about to use because let's be honest, this is not a very historical pattern. So I'm gonna use this for the stomacher and also the like, shirt jacket waist part that goes over it. And then the skirts, I don't love, but we'll, we'll see. Let's make our little stomacher piece.
I already pinned it just a tiny bit to take it in a little because it is rippling here uh, and this is gonna happen because there's no boning in this but there there will be boning and then I also folded the top down just to get an idea of like how much more space I have so I'm liking it so far here is what we're at I am also thinking of just taking off a half an inch on each of the or the back panel basically like I'm gonna take off a little bit on this back panel so that uh, it has room to close tighter if it needs it but I'm really happy with how these are looking now that I really like the way that this fits and looks, I am going to mark this up, take it and transfer it to paper. And then from there, I will cut out and plan all of the pieces in the silk, basically get ready to place the embroidery design. That's what our plan is. Now, let's do it. After tracing the pattern piece to my silk, I used pattern transfer paper and tool to trace my design onto the top of my fabric. I tried tracing with my light box, but the fabric was too dark for, for that, so this was my solution. Once my design was transferred, I set up my fabric on my loom, queued up a very long YouTube playlist, and went to town. I actually used the heart embroidery kit that I have in my shop as the inspiration for this piece. So many of the same beads and sequins used there are also used in this piece. Plus I added a bit of gold work to create texture and just play around with the design. Embroidery for the stomacher is done. Now I'm going to cut out a layer of the taffeta, a layer of duck canvas, and a layer of black cotton for the lining. And then with the duck canvas and the black cotton lining bit, I am going to add boning channels. And then I will sew the two pieces right sides together, add boning to the back where the grommets are gonna go, add grommets, and this will be done. Underneath the outer dress, there will be a red skirt. Uh, they call this a petticoat, but I know that can be kind of confusing considering I also use the word petticoat for fluffy skirts that you wear under. They call it a petticoat, we'll call it a petticoat. I'm making this garment out of the black cherry silk taffeta from Silk Baron. And once again, I'll be using a different American Duchess simplicity pattern. I use this pattern for my Sarah Sanderson costume, my pumpkin dress. I've used this pattern a lot and I really like it. I like the shape of it. And I also just like that it's fairly easy to put together. I will also be using a combination of machine sewing and hand sewing techniques, although let's be honest, I probably don't have the time to be doing it with hand sewing techniques. I'm still going to do it anyway. Once my pieces were cut out, I pinned them together with the plans to use French seams. To do this, I pinned and sewed my panels together with the wrong sides together. Then I pressed my seams, trimmed the seam allowance down to one quarter of an inch, flipped the fabric to the right sides together, and then pressed, pinned, and stitched my pieces together. Personally, I prefer the look of French seams to serge seams, so even though it takes longer, I did it like this anyway. For the side seam, I repeated the French seam process, but I left about a 10 inch gap at the top of each side seam so that I could get this skirt on and off. To clean up the slit in the top, I clipped about a half an inch into the fabric, applied fray check, then folded the slit over twice towards the inside of the skirt. Then I pleated the front and back panels down so that they were about 14 inches each and I applied bias tape to the top with a zigzag stitch and moved on to the hem. At this point I did a fitting to ensure that I made this part short enough and I ended up trimming about 4 inches off the bottom of this fabric. Then I folded and pressed the fabric twice and pinned it to prepare for a long day of hand sewing in which I filmed this cute short movie for your enjoyment. Moving on to the ruffle, I traced the ruffle pattern piece salvage to salvage twice. Then using pinking shears, I cut out the fabric 
being careful around the curves of the piece. Okay, so I use my pinking shears that are angular versus the circular ones or the like curved ones because I honestly just couldn't find them. So then as I was like finishing up cutting this strip of um, like ruffles, I looked over to my embroidery section. That's them. They're right there. The scissors that I wanted were right there all along and it's infuriating because I've already cut this. I already at least like got half of it cut when I realized that they were right there and I feel dumb. But anyway, I just want to share that with you. I would normally use these ones if you can't tell. They're a little curved. Uh, they basically make like little half circles. These are what I normally use for 18th century stuff, but I had to use these and the ruffles just gonna look a little different, but I'm gonna use these on the sleeves. So I'm gonna keep these out like where I can see them. So I don't forget where I put them. I seamed the ruffle strips together by machine with a straight stitch since they were cut on the salvage. To gather the ruffles, I am using a gathering whip stitch and stitching about every quarter of an inch so that I can have this gathered down to about half the length it currently is. Once my ruffle is gathered, I can pin it to this front of the skirt and then hand stitch it down with these pretty twisted bugle beads. I really love adding sparkle to gowns, especially gothic gowns. All right, friends, it's time to start the dress. I'm going to basically be franken patterning this dress so that I can have it do exactly what I want it to do. So first of all, I'm gonna use these sleeves on the Simplicity American Duchess pattern. That's just because I really love those sleeves. I used them for the pumpkin dress a while ago and I just loved them. So I wanna use that pattern. I also, since I used the kind of like front pattern as the base, for my stomacher, I'm gonna use that same Elizabeth Swan pattern for just the like front and the back panels. I also just really like that shape because I do not want like, I'm not making a robot la Francaise. So I don't want my like Watteau pleating. I don't want any of that. I want a fitted dress bodice top part and then skirts. So I'm gonna use the skirts also from that same Elizabeth Swan pattern. To start, we're gonna do a mock-up and then I am going to um, make like at, make the sleeve portion of that mock-up to fit to the sleeve or the sleeve hole or the arm side of that pattern. I do have some black cotton. This is all the black cotton I have left. It's a little under a yard. It might be a yard. I'm not sure, I didn't measure it, but I only have a little bit left, so I'm using that for the lining of the sleeve and the bodice section of this dress because I'm using a black silk shantung. This is from our local store called Fine Fabrics. I think, I thought I bought 11 yards of it, but this does not look like 11 yards. So <laughs> I hope that this is enough to do the skirt as well as um, the bodice area. But this is what I'll be using for that. And then also anything left over of this, I would love to use for ruffles, for the decorative portion of this dress. But for right now, I'm just gonna try and get a mock-up going. And basically, that means I'm gonna have to put my stays back on at some point today. I might just sew in my stays. We will see, let's go. These are the three bodice pieces. I'm going to transfer them to the cotton and do a fitting and go from there. And then these are the sleeve pieces. These two are actually decorative. I just wanted to iron them and get them ready. And then that's the actual one I'll be fitting. So once I get these three properly fit to my body and my stomacher, I can then add that piece and um, we can go from there. Yay! Oh, and then obviously I'll do skirts, but I haven't even, um, I don't do a mock-up of the skirts. Essentially what'll happen is I will get all this mocked up and get it perfect and then cut out the skirt fabric from the skirt pieces, the panels. So 
Okay, so it's honestly not awful. There is some gaping here, obviously, because I only have three pins on each side. And I was trying to like see like, what would it look like when it's fully lined? And so I've tried to pin them kind of like, I would say about a half an inch to five eighths of an inch away. Cause when I line it, there'll be a five eighths of an inch difference on this front here. Um, fit wise, it's actually fine. Like it's not the worst. It could be a tiny bit longer, but with the bum pad, which sits like right here, I think it's actually gonna be fine. And I'll have to do some minor fittings when I cut out the silk and add the skirts to kind of make sure this doesn't do weird stuff. So we'll make those changes when I'm working with the silk. But the big thing that I do need to change is this seam here just goes a little too high for comfort so I'm gonna just I think I'm gonna lower it just a little bit and then I can cut out sleeves and add them and see how they look I was like hesitant about doing my fittings with the long sleeve shirt on but then I realized I'm gonna have a chemise on underneath that needs to get tucked in to the sleeves so I'm actually gonna leave this on Wee! <laughs> I have an Eva right below me. She will not move. Okay, let's go here. Can we dance? Can we dance? There we go! Dance for the camera! Okay, I love you. <laughs> All right, so here is what it is with the sleeves. I think I need to set the sleeves just at like maybe an inch back more. So like move everything over an inch because the puffiness is kind of coming through more right here in front versus like right up here, but that's an easy thing to change. Otherwise, the only other thing that I'm gonna change is I'm gonna add an extra quarter of an inch to the front here, because again, it needs to be sewn up with the lining and like I like where it meets here. Like this is a really good framing of this stomacher to me. It, it doesn't quite like overlap on it. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all of my fabric. Starting at the center back, I'm going to sew my pieces together. I'm sewing my fashion fabric and my lining at the same time because it's just faster this way. For the lining pieces, I'm also going to sew three fifths of an inch away from the seam so I can place a piece of boning in each seam. Then I will add the side back pieces and side pieces in the same manner. So I was able to acquire all of this boning from the stays, the last, the stays that I was taking apart. I also have this one piece of spiral. The spiral I'm gonna use, it, it might be a little intense, but I'm gonna use it here, not all the way, cause I don't actually want it up at the shoulder. I just want it on this curve here. So I'm gonna cut this in half and I believe it'll go to about right here if I cut it in half and that'll help with that curve. And then I'll do the same on the other side. For the back one, I am gonna have to tape two together to get what I would like. And then I think I also either, for these side ones, I'll have to cut a couple down. I do have these smaller ones, these ones, but I think that's too small and I would like it pretty sturdy there. I don't know if I'm gonna put one in the front yet. I will let you know once I've got this all sewn, like these in and then sewn to the silk. So I just added a little bit of a stitch here uh, to stop this boning from like riding up into the shoulder area. I did it on both sides and now I'm ready to add the lining to the silk. So, yay. Using the correct pinking shears this time, I'm going to cut the sleeve flounces out of the silk shantan. Then with the right sides together, I will sew the sleeves together. Then I will sew the flounces right sides together. Before sewing the flounce to the sleeve, I stitched the lining to the sleeve at the sleeve hem and then turned it so the wrong sides of the fabric were together and basted the top of the sleeve. To attach the flounce, I am pinning it to the sleeve based off of the markings on the pattern. Then I am going to sew two very long basting stitches, each stitch about an inch in length, and then I can pull those two stitches together at the same time to gather down the flounces to fit the sleeve. Okay, so I have the top half basically done. Um, I added some stitching on this and then took out my basting stitches of the gathers 
and this is done and then I just machine sewed the sleeves in and then I did a like a little hand stitch to stitch the lining in so this is uh, a good place to end for the day when I come back in Sunday I'm going to do the skirts and then get to my the point where basically it's just hand sewing the hem and ruffles and I will probably spend most of my day doing those but I'm at a good place and then basically I'll have to do a, a fitting to place the snaps on the front of this and on the stomacher but we're in a good place. Eva what do you think? How do you think it's going? Think we're going we're doing good yeah hello happy sunday so today i am hopefully going to finish the gown or at least like enough of the gown to where it's just decorative stuff which i will do by hand and obviously worst case scenario i can hand sew on the drive there i have my skirt panels which i'm going to french seam together and then i'm going to attach them to the the bodice and I'm gonna attach them by machine following the pleating guidelines on this, which is at the, f the top of the pattern. And then I can hand sew the lining in and then hand sew the hem and the front little like opening part. And we can move on to details and pretty things. So let's hopefully, I know for a fact, I'll get all of that done today. And then I can do a fitting with the snaps and get everything to line up with the placard. But we're also going to try our darndest to get some decorative stuff done. So we'll talk then, but let's, let's get this sewn up. Let's, let's finish this gown today. And then I also have to style a wig and make a pocket problems for future Casey. Let's go. I cut the back pieces on the salvage, so I was able to seam those together. And then I added the other two panels by French seams. I used pins to mark the pleating guide. I realized after marking these that the very front of the skirt is pleated down. And so I had to hand stitch the front panels before I could pleat the skirts down and attach them to the bodice section. I used a whip stitch to hand stitch the front down, being very careful that my stitches were not seen on the front of the skirt. Now I can attach the skirt to the bodice. I actually stitched some gather stitches in onto the back two panels while I was at the sewing machine stitching down my pleats. So I lined up the center back seams, gathered the back panels, and pinned the pieces so that the front of the skirt lined up with the front of the bodice. Once that was sewn, I pinned the lining over that seam and whip stitched it down. We have now reached the point of only hand sewing, which is scary because I only had two more days to finish this. But I didn't choose this vampy Rococo life. This vampy Rococo life chose me or something like that. So I folded and pressed my hem twice. Lucky for me, the front panels were already done. Now I can whip stitch my hem, making sure it is almost invisible from the front. At this point, I could add some snaps and call this dress done. But when have I ever turned down the opportunity to add hand sewn decorative trim and sparkles to a gown? So I started by marking six two and a half inch wide strips going the width of my fabric. I cut them with the appropriate pinking shears, then with a paintbrush and a dish, I painted some fray check on the edges of my trim. Once that was dry, I folded my trim in half, pressed it, and then using a gathering whip stitch, I gathered these down. Next, I pressed the trim open. This task took so much longer than I expected it to, but the end result was still worth it. Then I pinned it to the front of my skirt. I actually didn't make enough for what I originally wanted to do, so I just lined the front of the skirt with it and stitched it down with beads and called it a day. Good morning, friends. It is the last part of making this like 18th century, but make it gothic gown. And that involves the wig because I have easily five bouffants sitting behind me and none of them aesthetically match this gown. So we're making a bouffant style wig. 
surprise i have this like silvery gray wig with black roots this is an old wig i've used this for a lot of costumes so i think this is going to be my base and then i basically bought a second one to rip up and create extra curls extra volume to use basically wherever i need to and so i guess like let's just get started and hopefully i can make a wig in a day okay so this is my canvas wig wig head this is um measured to my head size. So I think I got 22 inches. That's what my head size is. It's nice and sturdy. And then I have a C clamp that it hangs out on so that I can style it. I'm also going to use a flat iron, some clips to separate hair, curlers. I have a few more little bobs and, and things like uh, the donuts. That's what we're gonna use to build up hair. Some got to be glue. I have to grab a blow dryer, but I'll be using a blow dryer. My pump it up gold. That's the actual wig. I have a brush and then this is the new wig I just bought. I haven't even opened the package. I guess I'll do that next. And then I have some more, I have a comb. I have another comb and then I have my teasing comb. So I guess let's just start styling this wig. I cannot procrastinate it any longer. Cool, cool. So the first thing I did was section off the front pieces and start getting them curled. I tried using heat to change the part, but the wig is actually tied so that it lays a certain way. Eventually I did get the part to disappear, but it was quite challenging and used a lot of heat and spray. I used a flat iron and sponge rollers to curl the hair, and I used pins to hold the curlers close to the head of the wig. I also used a blow dryer once the curls were pinned to heat the root and manipulate the hair to do what I want. Alternatively, you can use a steamer, but that does need time to set and dry, and one day really isn't enough time to do that and also have wiggle room for mistakes. So this is the way. So I don't think I'm gonna add any donuts as like the base. I think I might use some of these as like a little bit, like maybe because this right here is a little roll and like, I don't know, maybe if I put it here and just get that front a little bit of height, not too much. Okay, because I also have some of these too and if I cut these up, they turn into these. I'm gonna use these inside of like ringlets. I don't know how to describe it properly, but that's kind of where my brain is at. Not really use this as the structure, use these. We're just gonna go to town. We're just gonna do some stuff and see what happens. Hi, editing Casey here. I realize that nonsense didn't make a lot of sense. It's great to know how to curl the wig and play with the front of the wig. I ended up using this tutorial from the American Duchess uh, beauty book to create the wig with the things that I had, obviously. Like I didn't have the exact stuff that they had and I also chose not to do braids, but I kind of just followed that and I think it looks great. And now the moment you have all been waiting for, the reveal.
Overall, I love this gown. However, there are a few things that I would like to change. Starting with the snaps at the front of the dress that attach the gown to the stomacher. I actually hate them. I think they look so ridiculous. But I also hate the historical method where you use like pins to pin the dress down. So if you have any solutions for that problem, the snaps, not the not the pins, we're not we're not going down the pins route. If you have any solutions for the snaps, please let me know in the comments below. Another thing that I think I would like to change that might solve that problem is I would really like to add a ruffle going around the neckline, so like uh, around the stomacher and then uh, around my neck. I think that would look really cute, and I think that would better frame the whole piece than just the like straightness of the dress. Um, I also think that those ruffles might hide any snaps. So maybe I'll try that first and go from there. I'm not really sure, but I would really like to add that just again for aesthetic. I also really wanna make a black chemise as well as a black fluffy under petticoat that I can wear under the red skirt, mainly because I think that the black undergarments uh, are gonna hide easier. And I also like the idea of another petticoat underneath the one that you see because I think it'll give it a little bit floof at the bottom if I add a ruffle to it, that's at least the goal, but I would really like to do that. I also just like the idea of possibly being able to like bustle up the skirt. It's kind of like a polonaise. So that's something I would like to think about in the future as well. At some point, I would also really like to make a brand new stomacher out of that black fabric that I used for the stays. I think that that is just such a beautiful fabric with a lot of really good texture. And to have that stomacher paired with a black like silk petticoat with lots of ruffles as well could be a fun like way to change up this outfit a little bit have a couple different variations like an all black look and then like the black and red I think that could be really cool and fun you all know that I love to make pieces that I can interchange maybe this is the jumping off point for a like partially gothic rococo capsule wardrobe is that a thing Anyway, I also could totally see that like whole all black look being paired with a hat. That could be really fun. Overall though, like I really absolutely loved it and I am thrilled to find an opportunity to wear it again. That's all I have for this video. If you are interested in a how to become a cosplay guest video or a how to develop your own hands-on workshops video, those are the next videos that I have coming out in the next month or so. Please consider subscribing to see those. And I will also be doing some live streams of the Glinda petal construction, more timbre embroidery like I have previously done. So check the community tab for that. Finally, y'all, 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 we've reached 10,000 subscribers on here. I can't really thank you all enough. This is kind of crazy to me. When I started making videos, obviously everyone dreams of a silver play button and I still dream of it, but the actual act of doing this is a lot harder than, than the act of like dreaming about doing it. And so what I'm trying to say is thank you all so much for being here with me in this space and supporting my art. It really means a lot to me. And now that there are 10,000 of you, welcome. All right, don't forget to sign up for Tambor and Rotary courses. The price will go up on June 1st. So get in while it is at this low price right now. And until next time, May all your spooky dreams come true. What am I doing with my hair? What am I doing with my heads? All right. Wow, my stays are on sideways. Or is it you? Or are you the problem? Am I the problem? <laughs> Why? It smells, it smells like Home Depot, actually. That's. Really weird. Now that my undergarments are completely finished, it's time to get started on the parts of the... I wanna do it from this angle. Hi! You're gonna be quiet, right? All right, she's just like, Mom, what are you doing? Like more movement, like your body. Is this a video? Yeah.
Yeah. Well, if that's the case. If that's the case. I'm gonna eat. Oh, God. Uh, is it dead? No, it's weird. Can I go run towards it? Can you keep it? Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal laugh. More dramatic. Head back. Like, ah ha ha. More ha ha ha. Ha ha. Whoa. Eva, dance? There she is! Here's the baby! There's the baby! Cha cha cha. Okay. Are we done? You're not gonna make any more noise? <laughs> so, I have this nice canvas wig head. I have a C clamp for the wig head so I can take and adjust it as per needed. That is filming equipment, so we're just gonna redo this because, hi, I'm a professional.